Hello, this is Dr. Fergus Donahoe, and in this video we're going to be going over symbolic logic proofs of both versions of De Morgan's theorem. These are two of our rules of replacement, and each one says that the negation of either a disjunction or a conjunction is equivalent to the opposite of that. I mean, in the conjunction's case, it's equivalent to a disjunction of the negation of each part. And in the disjunction's place, it's equivalent to the conjunction of both being false. You're currently watching For the Love of Wisdom, my YouTube channel on free thought, philosophy, and critical thinking. I have more videos besides the ones on logic, so check those out if you like. And this video is part of a series of videos on symbolic logic. Uh, we began with a video just talking about what makes an argument a good one in general. And we looked at both inductive arguments and deductive arguments. And one of the important things about a deductive argument is that it has to be valid, which means that its premises have to entail its conclusion. So we started looking at deductively valid argument forms. And specifically, we focused on sentential logic, which uses single letters to represent entire sentences or propositions. And so it tells us about the logical relations between our sentences or propositions. But it does not let us symbolize uh, detailed things about what each proposition says. So we looked at rules of inference. Then we looked at rules of replacement. And then we started to do proofs, first with the rules of inference. And then we moved on to learning about conditional proof, which is a method for proving a conditional by assuming its antecedent and deriving its consequent. And with conditional proof in hand, we started doing proofs of various rules of replacement. And we did several proofs of rules of replacement, but there were a few that we could not do with just conditional proof and our previous rules. We needed a new way to prove something, and that's indirect proof, which lets us prove something by showing that the assumption of its opposite leads to a contradiction. And so we used indirect proof to prove so a few more rules of replacement. And now we're at the last rule of replacement, that we have to do a proof for. We've done proofs for all the previous rules of replacement, and De Morgan's is the only one that's left. So here we have the two forms of De Morgan's theorem. One says the negation of P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. Okay, And the other one says that neither P nor Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. And we're going to do proofs of each of these. And we're starting with a proof of neither P nor Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. And as usual, we're going to start this by assuming what we have on the left side of the biconditional, which is neither P nor Q. And we want to get not P and not Q. How can we get that? This is a conjunction. We can get a conjunction by proving each of the conjuncts and then conjoining them together. So we want to prove not P and not Q separately. And how can we prove not P? Well, it looks like we can use indirect proof to prove P. Sorry, to prove not P. And we want to start by assuming P. This is the opposite of what we want to prove if we can get a contradiction, we'll be able to derive not P from this indirect proof. Well, look at what we have in line one. We have the negation of P or Q. If we can get P or Q, that will contradict line one. We'll have our contradiction, and we can get not P. Well, since we have P, we can easily get P or Q by adding Q to line two, and we get P or Q by addition. So then we just conjoin lines one and three. We get P or Q and neither P nor Q, which is a contradiction. 
That lets us finish this indirect proof and we get not P. Now we want to prove not Q. And we're going to follow the same basic method. We start by assuming Q, which is the opposite of what we want to prove. And then we add P to it to get Q or P. And we have one more step here. We commute it to get P or Q. And now we can just conjoin P or Q with neither P nor Q to get a contradiction. And then that lets us finish this indirect proof and we get not Q. And now we have both not P and not Q on separate lines. So we just conjoin those together to get not P and not Q. And that lets us finish this conditional proof and we get if neither P nor Q, then not P and not Q. Okay, and now we want to go in the other direction. So we'll start by assuming what we have on the right-hand side of the biconditional, which is not P and not Q. And we want to prove the negation of P or Q. Well, the best way to do this is with an indirect proof. We're going to assume the opposite of what we want to prove, and that is P or Q. And now we want to get a contradiction. Well, we can start by simplifying line 13 and we get not P. And now that we have not P, we can do a disjunctive syllogism on line 14 and 15 to get Q. And now that we have Q, we can simplify line 13 to get not Q. And we can conjoin those two lines together to get Q and not Q. That's a contradiction. So now we can conclude the negation of what we assumed. So we get neither P nor Q by indirect proof. And that lets us conclude if not P and not Q, then neither P nor Q from lines 13 through 19 conditional proof. And now that we've completed two conditional proofs going from one part of the biconditional to the other, we can conclude from lines 12 and 20, neither P nor Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. And now after a word from our sponsor, we will take a look at a proof for the other form of De Morgan's theorem. And now we're going to do a proof for the negation of P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. And we're going to start by assuming what we have on the left-hand side, not P and Q. And we want to prove not P or not Q. Uh, one way we might do try to prove not P or not Q is through conditional proof, where we would assume P and try to show not Q. But that might be a little difficult to do here because even if we had P, we wouldn't be able to do much with this to get not Q out of it. So we're going to do something else instead. We're going to use indirect proof. And we're going to start by assuming the negation of not P or not Q. So we get neither not P nor not Q. And <clears throat> the first time I did this, I used De Morgan's theorem. I know I'm trying to prove De Morgan's theorem with this proof, but I use the other form of De Morgan's theorem here. So it's not exactly cheating. So I did that the first time around, and I got not not P and not not Q. And then I used double negation twice, and I got P and Q. But, you know, this did, because I'm trying to prove De Morgan's theorem, it still felt like cheating to even use another form of De Morgan's theorem in this proof. And so looking at what I did with the previous proof, I got some ideas for how to do this better. And so we'll go take a look at that instead of continuing with this here. So here we are at the other way of proving De Morgan's theorem. And we have the same two assumptions as before. We First we've assumed uh, the negation of P and Q, and then we've assumed neither not P nor not Q. And we want to get 
uh, what do we want to get? We want to get not p or not q, and we can we're going to do that through an indirect proof. So what we want to get right now is a contradiction. Now, if we look at what we have on line one, we have the negation of p and q. What this tells us is that if we can get p and q on a line, we can conjoin it with line one for a contradiction. And that will allow us to conclude the opposite of our assumption for this indirect proof. So, how can we get p and q? Well, we know from looking at the previous version of this proof that what we have on line two is actually equivalent to p and q. But instead of using De Morgan's to get p and q out of this, we are going to prove, try to prove p and q separately. Remember, in the previous proof, we wanted to prove p and q, or not p and not q rather, but we wanted to prove two conjuncts of a conjunction. And it's the same thing here. We want to prove two different conjuncts of the conjunction. So we're going to prove each one separately using conditional proof. So first of all, we want to prove P. So how can we start by, if we want to prove P, we're going to start by assuming not P. And now what can we do here? We have not P. We want to get a contradiction. Okay. Well, through addition, we get not P or not Q, and that directly contradicts what we have in line two. So now we can conjoin line two with line four, and we get not P or not Q, and neither not P nor not Q. And now that we have this contradiction, we can finish this indirect proof and conclude the opposite of what we assumed. In this case, we derive P because we had assumed not P. And now we're going to follow the same basic procedure to get Q. We start by assuming not Q. And we're just going to add not P to this so we get not Q or not P. And because they're in a different order than what we have in line two, we use commutation to get not P or not Q. And now we get the same contradiction that we got on line five, but this time from lines two and nine. And use, because we have that contradiction now, we can finish this indirect proof and we get the opposite of what we assumed. This time it's Q. And now we have P and Q on separate lines and we use conjunction to put them together on one line. And then we use conjunction again to combine line 12 with line one and we get P and Q and not P and Q. That lets us complete this indirect proof and we get the opposite of what we had assumed. On line two, we had assumed neither not P nor not Q. So the opposite of that is not P or not Q and that is what we were trying to derive all along. So we finish this conditional proof and we get if the negation of P and Q, then not P or not Q. And now we're gonna go in the opposite direction. We, uh, we're going to start by assuming what we have on the right-hand side of the condi biconditional, which is not P or not Q. And we want to prove the negation of P and Q. Well. One of the best ways to prove the negation of something is through indirect proof. So we're going to start by assuming the opposite of this, which is P and Q. And now we want to get a contradiction here. Well, how can we get a contradiction? We have on line 16, not P or not Q, and we have P and Q here. So we could use possibly disjunctive syllogism to get one of the disjuncts here. But I'm gonna do something different. Well, first of all, I'm simplifying line 17. I'd have to do that anyway, I get P. And now instead of using double negation, I'm going to use material implication on line 16 to get if P, then not Q. And I could have 
gone and not not p on this line, and the next line would be the same. On line 20, I get not q through modus ponens. And if on line 19 I had assumed, sorry, I derived not not p, I could have used disjunctive syllogism to get not q. And now that I have not q on line 20, I can simplify line 17 to get q. And now I can conjoin those together on line 22, which is a contradiction, q and not q. That lets me finish this indirect proof, and I get the negation of what I had assumed. So that is not P and Q. And that was what I was going after, so now I can finish this conditional proof, and I get if not P or not Q, then the negation of P and Q. And now that I have both conditionals here, I can use biconditional introduction to get the biconditional I was trying to prove, which is the negation of P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. This has been the last video on sentential logic, and but it's not the last video on symbolic logic. In subsequent videos, we're going to be focusing on predicate logic. This is logic where instead of just symbolizing a single sentence or proposition with a single letter, we are going to use separate symbols for the predicate and the subject of a sentence. Uh, so for example, here I'm using Greek letters phi and nu. This is the uppercase phi, the lowercase nu. And these just stand in for a capital letter and a lowercase letter. The capital letter stands for the predicate, the lowercase letter for the subject. And we're going to be learning some new rules for using a subject predicate uh, symbolizations. So don't, you know, this might look complicated right now because there are Greek letters in it and stuff, but don't worry about that. In the next video, this stuff will be explained and we'll actually be using uh, the English alphabet. Uh, thank you for watching. Check out my other videos on logic and stay tuned for the continuing videos in this series on symbolic logic. Also, if you have found this video helpful, uh, please like it so that other people will learn about it, um, share it with your friends, and you know, please help spread news uh, that these videos are available so that more people will watch them and learn from them. Thank you. And in case I forgot to mention it before, there's also a corresponding blog post for this video. Check the link down below in the description which will go over the same material that has been covered in this video.